Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. In this video, we are covering CCNA Semester 1, Introduction to Network, and this is Chapter 5, Ethernet, Section 5.3, LAN Switches. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to explain basic switch concepts, compare fixed configuration and modular conf switches, configure a Layer 3 switch. So switch ports fundamentals. Layer 2 LAN switch connects the end devices to central intermediate device on most Ethernet network. Perform switching and filtering based only on the MAC addresses. Builds a MAC address table that is used to make forwarding decision. Depends on the router to pass data between IP subnetworks. So from one network to another network, switch can't do that. Depends on the router. Switch MAC address table. Uh, if I show you, okay, let me just open a paint and I'll do this on the paint. I'll show you how the switch will learn the MAC addresses. Okay, I want you to imagine um, this, is the, this is a switch. The difference between the switch and a hub is the switch is a bit more intelligent device because the switch, so this is my switch, say switch one, and this is a switch and it keeps a table called a MAC address table. Yeah, so this table here, let's imagine this we have a table so a little bit small and put this table is our mac table some people call it ta cam table and so on this table is made out of port numbers so i've got port whatever port i have plus what mac address there is right so at the moment we don't have any ports uh, we have we know what the ports we have for example imagine port one and port two whatever they're connected so say say i've got two pcs here pc this pc and another pc on this side now the pcs are connected to a switch this pc is connected to port one and this pc is connected to port two so s the pc has got the mac address mac address table remember it was made out of 48 bits representing hexadecimal just imagine it's aa yeah only the first two digits and this one is bb so now as soon as aa sends a message for example it sends a frame uh, this towards the switch so it sends a frame this way yeah it goes this way it goes this way the frame the switch is going to add that to the uh, look at the source right what's the source port find out the mac address of the source and add it or populate this mac address table so it says okay well i just received a frame on port one and port one is uh, mac address aa good I'll keep that on my table. I'll keep it for five minutes. And uh, look at the destination, MAC address. Where is it going? It's going, for example, to BB. But do I have a BB on my table? I don't. Since I don't have BB on my table, I'm gonna send it out of every port. I will behave like a hub. I will send it out of every port, apart from the port they came in. So I will send it out of all these ports, including this port, but not this port. So it came in on that port, it's asking for a device that I don't know the MAC address and I'm just going to flood it. This is called flooding. Yeah. It's called flooding, flooding. And flooding happens for unknown, unknown unicast addresses, unicast, and for broadcast. So if if I have a broadcast packet or unknown unicast, I will flood it. And like that, I learned it, uh, the PCA AA on port one, I'll update my table, but I don't know where BB is, so I'm just gonna flood it. When BB replies, so when it replies to BB, it will look at the source and it will update the table. Okay, well, BB is on here, so I'll add that. And the destination is AA, for example. Now, once the destination is AA, it's on my table, I'm going to send it directly. So I'm not going to send it anymore. I'm not going to flood it. I'm just going to send it directly. So this is how switch learns the MAC address table. Go back on the slides and I'll go through the slides. So the switch receives a broadcast frame from PC1 on port 1. So then the switch enters the source MAC address and the switch port that receives the frame into the address table. So it keeps that MAC address table. And because the destination address is a broadcast, the switch will flood the frame to all ports except the port to which it received the frame. So as it's coming in from this port and it's flooding it. The destination device replies to the broadcast with a unicast frame addressed to PC1. 
then the switch will build his MAC address table looking at that source and it will direct it to the PC one only it will not flood it the switch can now forward the frame between the source and destination device without flooding because it, it has an entries in the address table to identify the associated port communication on the switching is duplex and half duplex sorry half duplex or full duplex duplex setting if we have a half duplex we are uh, using the protocol carrier sense multiple access collision detection and this is unidirectional data flow higher potential for collision and higher uh, connectivity or hub connectivity i should say so for example in this only one device can send not two devices can send at the same time then we have a full duplex which is now our switches it's point to point only attaches a dedicated switch port requires full duplex support on both ends this is collision free and collision detect circuit is disabled so for example here the old devices they have to compete uh, medium access and here the devices they don't have to compete as soon as they have something to send that will send it auto mdix auto mdix auto detects the type of connection required and configured on the interface accordingly so for example if you connect two switches together all switches you have to make sure that this cable is a crossover if the switches they do support auto mdix and auto mdix requires that duplex is set to auto and the speed is set to auto and then mdix works here it will fix the cable it doesn't matter if you put a straight through or crossover cable it will work if you connect the switch to the router you better make sure that you put a straight through cable and the switch to the pc straight through cable uh, question for you guys uh, if i connect the pc to the router what cable i'm going to use well think about it router is just an advanced pc so if you directly connect a PC and a router, it's like connecting two PCs together, but you're going to need a crossover cable. Frame forwarding methods on Cisco switches. So first, frame forwarding type we have is store and forward. Store and forward takes the whole frames and it stores it in RAM. Make sure that it uh, computes the CRC. Make sure that it's valid. The switch looks up the destination address, which determines the outgoing interface. Then the frame is, is forwarded out of the correct port. The second method, which is a bit faster, it's cut through. Cut through switch forwards the frame before it's entirely received. At the minimum, the destination address of the frame must be read before the frame can start be, can be forwarded. So as, as the frame is coming in, we read the destination and we start forwarding. There's two types of forwarding on cut through switches. We have fast, for, fast forwarding switching, which is the lowest level latency, fastest immediately forwards a packet after reading the des destination address. Typical cut-through method of switching. There's another type of cut-through switching which is fragment-free and this is reads up to first 64 bytes making sure there hasn't been any fragments or fragment-free. Memory buffering on the switches, port-based and shared memory buffering. So port-based memory, in port-based memory buffering, Frames are stored in the queues that are linked to specific incoming and outgoing ports. So the, each port has got their own memory. Shared memory buffering deposits all frames into common memory buffer, which all the ports on the switch share. Now port-based uh, memory buffering is, for example, okay, if the ports are 100 MB, they're going to be working at 100 MB. Shared memory, you can kind of like, uh, uh, even, even if you don't have all the ports being able to, because what you're assuming is that not all the ports are going to be using 100% of the memory all the time. So kind of like, okay, well, you have, say, 24 ports, each 100 MB, but you don't have enough memory for all of them to be using 100% of the, of the bandwidth. PoE switches, so power over Ethernet is the capability of the switches to provide power over Ethernet. So that is, is a big improvement because we can, we can provide power for the IP phones, we can provide power for access points, and so on. So, for example, think of it your USB. Here you put an USB, USB port actually gives power. So you can charge your mobile phone through USB port. Same, the switches, they can give you power through the copper uh, port. For example, then you don't have to go and buy uh, like external plugs or external power supply for this IP phones and so on. Fixed versus modular configuration. For example, fixed configuration of the switches are limited to those they originally came with the switch 
modular switches they do accept chassis uh, the chassis they do accept the line cards which you can buy and you can for example extend your ports you know you just add a new line cards with extra 24 ports stackable switches for example if you connect two switches together you're going to be losing ports very very useful uh, important ports for the users and then the switches they're going to behave in independently they're going to go through the spanning tree and some they're going to exchange data with each other with the stack will switching what we're doing is like we are configuring we are making all all those i think what are they four switches together and we're creating it as a one giant switch and then all the configuration will be happening in the master so only once configuration and plus they don't they don't behave independently they don't go through the spanning tree and all that the individual switches would do it's important to remember that the daisy chain uh, you have to connect them through the daisy chain so I switch one to two two to three three to four and then four back to one the switches layer two against layer two three switches so layer two switches for example they don't support ip protocol they don't understand they have an ip address so you can manage them one and that's it so if you for example you want to do like inter vlan routing you have to implement router in the stick where the packet they go to the router and they on the one virtual interface on the router and they come back through the other that is layer two switches they only work at layer two information like mac address source and destination mac address while layer three switches are in between the routers and the switch so they can they can behave like a switch and they can behave like a router so they can run routing protocol they can run access control list as well as they can do the the switching so for example if you want to if you uh, implement inter vlan routing you don't have to implement another a router just for that type 3 types of layer 3 interfaces the major types of layer 3 interfaces are switched virtual interface svi this is logical interface on a switch associated with the virtual local area network now if you have a layer 2 switch layer 2 switch has one svi that you can configure like the vlan 1 or vlan 99 for the management layer 3 switch you can create as many virtual interfaces as you want so each vlan can have the virtual interface so you create vlan 10 you can create a switch virtual interface with vlan 10 vlan 20 vlan 30 and so on now rooted port the physical port on layer 3 switch configured to act as a router is configured router port by putting an interface into no switch port so by default let me just point it here by default the ports on the switch are switch ports which means even if you have a layer 3 switch the port is behaving like a layer 2 port so what you need to do you have to go to that individual port and say no switch port so then then it will start behaving like layer 3 or another name for it is called a rooted port a layer 3 ether channel is when you bundle two or more ports together to actually increase the bandwidth again layer 3 ether channel is more in C semester 3 I think it's chapter 3 if I'm not wrong okay think of it this is our switch so the switch has got few ports uh, that's supposed to be a square yeah so square square all these ports all these ports I'm trying to draw here and I'm not being very help good at it they are by default are layer 2 yeah so they are switch port so if you want to make it like a router port because this is layer 3 switch and then you have to go to that port the individual port say this is a port this port here and you have to say no switch port no switch port then this port is like a layer 3 port you can give an IP address and so on another port is switch virtual interface these ones are SVIs SVIs are virtual they don't exist it's not none of these physical you create them by saying interface VLAN and then VLAN number that will create your virtual interface ether channel is when you bundle two or more ports say we bundle all these ports to behave like a one port increase the bandwidth speed and so on to configure a rooted port on the layer 3 switch first you have to access the certain port so fa06 for example here we see that port there and we say no switch word that's the first command if you try and give an ip address without doing that command it's going to give you an error so no switch port give an ip address and then do not shut down and the switches you don't have to do not shut down they are up anyway so when we do show IP interface brief, we can see that interface FA06 has got a port, has got an IP address, and layer two, layer one and layer two is up. 
okay thank you very much for watching please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe this has been Astrid Krasnici thank you bye